Uh, welcome to uh, another episode of Rooster Talk. This is our first ever in-person Rooster Talk, um, and where we give you an update on on, on conversations we have with companies and identities. Um, I spoke to Andrew Rodonjic from um, Venture Minerals probably three weeks ago, two weeks ago, yeah. uh, on a coffee with Sanso, and they've just had an um, announcement on their uh, drilling at Golden Grove North, and I was really keen to get an update on what it means um, with all the numbers. So, um, Andrew, yeah, far away. Oh, thank you, Noel. Uh, good to talk again. Yeah, the, um, yeah, we've had a pretty good result there last week, where we, uh, we've got a drill hole into our main target there at Orcus. And uh, in that first hole, we've uh, hit sulphides, you know, significant amount of sulphides. And it uh, looks as though from the portable XRF, we've got some you know, significant zinc and, and copper in there. We obviously can't measure the gold and silver, but uh, certainly the uh, ingredients from the hole drilled back in 2008 is pointing that it will be definitely gold. There's no assaying for silver, but uh, you know, we're pretty confident we're going to get uh, you know, the right sort of suite of metals for a VMS uh, discovery. I mean, with the um, obviously you haven't got the numbers, the real numbers yet. But in terms of uh, geology, uh, are you able, is that consistent with what you guys are seeing from your drilling and what historically is out there? Look, uh, the historical drilling was always was focused more on iron ore, uh, but certainly we're, we're seeing you know you know you've got to reinterpret their geology a little bit. But uh, it looks looks very similar. We're starting to get a bit of an idea on the on the dip. But uh, still early days, but uh, you know, we're just ticking a few boxes and uh, certainly seeing some similarities to Golden Grove itself. Okay. Um, I, I want you to explain some of the things like, you know, the, um, in, in your announcements, especially in, in figure three, where you start talking about the EMs and things like that. Mm. Uh, and how, how does that um, play into the, the, you know, the picture of exploring your Golden Grove North? Well, look, at, at Golden Grove North, we, um, I suppose we started first getting all the historical data, get all the drilling, that's just for us. It's a bit like getting mining a database. To get a, mining the data, and you, to do that, you've got to actually get all the data together and kind of level it, if you like. So throw out the rubbish, keep the good information, and get all that data. And it takes, you know, something like 900 drill holes historically, but a lot of it was shallow. Some drilled for nickel, some drilled, you know, a lot of it for gold, a lot of it for, um, some of it for, for VMS and uh, also a lot, quite a lot for iron ore itself. And uh, we go through those data sets and that includes the, not only the drilling but also the soils, rock chips, any mapping. And then we go back and we work on that data ourselves and generate it. So we start from, if you like, a level playing field. And once we've done that, we start getting soil normally together, doing the sort of low cost exploration. So it's all very methodical, systematic, and then we start doing some, getting some copper anomalies, we start getting some zinc anomalies at the surface, we, we, we've mapped, we've found some, looks like gossness material, you know, Vulcan, we've got uh, some sulf, copper sulfides identified at the surface with 24%, nearly 24% copper result, uh, some gold rock chips, so, but after we do all that, we then did a, uh, a very first pass airborne EM, just to give us, sort of, give us an idea what may be interesting, maybe not, but then get in with the land-based EM, and we used squid the very first time because we actually pushed down and looked more at the more conductive uh, clay and, and salt lake areas to try and sort of see through that through that conductive cover um, and more recently now we're just doing straight normal moving loop EM that MLEM as we abbreviate it and that on top of the airborne and the soil just zoo, you know gets us into that space and and when you look very very carefully at the um, you know at our maps you'll see that we've got AUKUS We've got Vulcan North, we've got Vulcan West, we're on the same trend. But the, the land-based EM was, you know, a little bit of Vulcan West, a little bit of Vulcan North. We then started at AUKUS, and then we've been working all, pushing our way, if you like, all the way along that trend. So that's, you know, several kilometres, but we're still developing EM targets. And you'll see in one of our figures that we've actually got another target just north of AUKUS. We're getting strong conductors. So these are all very, very good signs. So these... VMS systems tend to occur in clusters. And remember, we're only looking at the top 350 metres, if, if lucky, if you're lucky. And here we are at Golden Grove, still getting hits at 1,200 metres below the surface. So mm. the main axis is, is 
step, not necessarily a long strike. But we're starting to see what looks like another a fourth target along that trend, just between Orcas and, and Balkan uh, North. So that's pretty exciting. So mm. that's the sort of the exploration phase we go through. So we do the low cost stuff first and then obviously just work our way up and getting that target narrowed down and then the drill, the drill bit comes in mm. and then obviously starts putting a few more holes in and, and then you can start building a geological model and start ticking the boxes and, and certainly that uh, first hole at Orcas has ticked a big box for us because you know we've got, you know, it's all grade mineralisation yet we can't tell but uh, certainly very strong indications that we've got sulphide. So, um, now we're looking towards uh, another line about 300 metres to the south where we've got uh, a stronger part of the conductor and we're putting a line straight over that. So we're pretty excited about hopefully that will mean a lot more massive sulphide and hopefully higher grades as well. That's happening as we speak or is that... No, we're still drilling the line. Uh, so, uh, or OWRC1 or AUK1. Uh, was the first line, first one. We, we've uh, just continued to move onto the second, third, and as deep as the RC rig we've got can go to, it's probably got a capacity of maybe 270, 280 metres, so a reasonably small rig, but enough to sort of get us moving. And um, and once we've finished that that line, we'll then move down to um, well, it's not a part of AUKUS, but that southern line, and we've got um, probably. We'd we'll probably be there later in the week, I would say. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, how many meters are you actually drilling? Uh, this, uh, I assume this is phase one drilling the, the the recent announcement. Then the the second line that you're talking about is probably phase two. No, that's that's part of phase one. Oh, that's part of phase one. Yeah, phase one uh, was just w one line at Vulcan North, and even at Vulcan North, you look at the EM plane, it's geez, nearly 800 meters long. We drilled one line. Yeah, yeah. We've gone down to Orcus, and we we had two lines because of that that sort of more conductive area in the center of the plate um, and uh, so strong, stronger anomaly there we had obviously the drill hit you have to drill under that, yeah, under yeah. that surely yep. and, um, and then we're going down to Vulcan West and then down to, across the Vulcan so that's our initial 13 hole program okay. but you know if anything goes better than that we'll, we'll just keep going yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. in terms of for, for those viewers that don't quite understand you know the EMs and that in, in basic simplistic science you're basically sending an electric impulse the metals or the commodities or yeah the elements um, send back a different message and that's how you depict is, is would that be f a fair description well look I think uh, it's a it's a they measure the response time the response time the, yeah the, the delay and then you know, your EM will pick up, you know, more massive, it's got to have sort of connected sulphides like, you know, stringers or, or you know, reasonable, yeah, yeah. reasonable concentration. And generally it's going to be your, your copper, iron, your nickel sulphides. Your zinc won't, doesn't show up. Yep. Your sphalerite doesn't show up in uh, in downhole EM. Yep. But, uh, not downhole, in moving loop EM at all. So yep. I think it's very much an indicator of copper sulphides and iron sulphides. Yep. So, we're seeing definitely uh, Thank you. the portable XRFs picked up the coppers, co picked up copper, yeah. uh, so there's copper sulphides and there's also uh, iron sulphides or pyrite as we're seeing in this particular yeah. case. So it's a, uh, yeah, so EM's a good guide, but there's also other things, you know, depending on the strength of your response. And the geophysicists are getting better at discriminating between things like um, graphite, or even groundwater, yeah. you know, like that gives you an EM response. But because it looks down, it con tends to see the top of it rather than, so it's hard to get a dip. You know, so those things are challenging and also the, the level is challenging in terms of the RL and the depth. Yeah. So there's a lot of, um, there's still a lot of interpretation for life. I guess you could take away from that that the signals that you get would be, uh, something significant as opposed to something insignif insignificant in a, in the sh shape of a body i guess Co correct yeah look yeah. We've, we've got it it's some guide yeah um and uh and the closer you get like the down hole EM, which um you know we put the pipe down the hole and that gets you a much better response because you're already 
be like 200 meters in the ground or wherever. Yeah. And that usually looks sort of like within the sort of 75 meters of that, of the, yeah. you know, radius of that hole. That probably pinpoints it down. And the more data points you get at it, like most things, the more accurate that model becomes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in terms of the um, the drilling, obviously that's sort of something that I looked at it and I thought, well, that's in, that's good because you you actually now you drilled underneath sort of the the last end of hole that we talked about in, in our last conversation. Yep. That sort of give you an indication that hey, there's sulfites underneath. I guess it's whether it's enough is another story, but at least there's a lot of smoke, good smoke, I guess. Yeah, look, the, uh, the intersection uh, that was previously there was, you know, with the, with the gold, the silver, not, well, no silver, sorry, but the zinc and the copper. But even if you add a little bit of silver, say 10 grams per tonne, you see that the equivalent of that is around about 7.5% zinc equivalent. But when you look at Goss and Hill and Scuttle, that's about 15, so nearly halfway there, just at that intersection. And it's, you know, so it's bordering on all grade already. So any improvement on that, and uh, you know we're you know we're, we're in the zone, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite quite exciting. I guess you know it's, if if you were in an unknown area, as opposed to being in a known VMS area, uh, I think that must be encouraging. The fact that you um, you are getting similar geology because VMS tend to occur in districts, right? So oh, so is. if you, you you found one, doesn't mean that you're not going to find many more. That's the beauty about VMS. That's what I like about it. Yeah, look, and the fact we've got it over several kilometres and with several targets and the more work we do the more targets we're getting so very very encouraging signs uh, um, interestingly to the north of your tenant package um, Firefly has a, a um, um, well they've been promoting that they've got this gold strike coming down towards cutting across your northern part there um, is that something you guys are looking at as well we are uh, actually um, when we picked up the tenant package um, you know, we did that acquisition. We were focused on the VMS out to the eastern part of the package, but that northwestern corner, and also to the to the northwest, there's a lot of historic gold drilling around old gold prospects. There's, I think, in excess of 30 uh, recorded um, uh, shafts and diggings, probably uh, as most of them probably turned the to last century in the early 1900s through the 1930s. But there is a cluster uh, on our northwest corner which has got that Melville trend. Um, so we're going through, like we did previously on our ground, going through all the data. So there's a fair bit of drilling done, you know, a lot of it sort of in the uh, 80s uh, through into the 90s and a lot of close spaced, reasonably shallow drilling. So we're just going through and trying to get all, mine that data and work out, you know, the strength, I suppose, of those gold targets. And yeah, it's definitely, definitely something we'll look at in the future. And it's, you know, very obviously on, on the trend of Melville and, and that meter at 1400 grams they got. You know, uh, a few couple of months ago now was you know pretty exciting. So that's clearly the the Yalgu area is known for gold. So the prospectivity is quite high. So we'll definitely get onto that. Uh, not necessarily this round of drilling, no, but uh, probably in, in future rounds of drilling. Well, it's good that you know you can see that it's a real nice cooking cooking arena for everything. Um, look, Andrew, you know the rain's really making <laughs> things hard here. Um, but we'll wrap it up. But thank you for your time and. Um, um, and we'll, we'll follow your progress. Excellent. Right. Thanks All again, right. Noel. Thank All you. Best.